Hi guys, finally back. It's been a while since I have done a video. Um, I don't even know where to start. A lot has been going on. Um, my mum was taken to hospital uh, about six weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer now. Um, she had a pretty bad heart attack and was put into intensive care for a few weeks. So uh, I spent a bit of time interstate at my hometown and then traveling an extra hour and a bit each day to visit her in hospital. Um, she was in Tamworth Hospital. So it's been um, a little bit crazy and I'm just starting to get back on track. So this piece has actually taken me quite a few weeks anyway to get done because um, there was, well, you'll see, it was a filing cabinet and I turned it into a laundry hamper because I'm redoing our uh, bathroom. We are, another spoiler, we are looking to move in about 18 months to two years. We want to be out of suburbia, out of Brisbane, um, and moving north on the coast. So where that is, we're not sure yet. We've found a couple of cute little places that we will probably move to, but we're not 100% sure. Anyway, I'm going to stop yabbering and I'm going to get into it. So stick with me, enjoy the video, um, like, subscribe, share the video, click the notification bell for um, all the videos that we release going forward. That would be really appreciated, guys. Um, Thank you so much and thanks for sticking by and sorry it's been so long but i'll get back on track i hope okay cheers guys as you'll see here i am measuring that little gap between the drawers where that um, divider part is if that makes sense i'm i have an idea of what i want to do right now but i'm just trying to work out how to execute it so you will see me thinking you will see me making measurements you will see me just having no clue what i'm doing for a little minute well miss i guess i'll be on my way now you just give me a i've worked out what i want to do okay so i'm just going to flip it on its back and then I am going to attempt to remove that little shelf divider. I don't know what to call it, whatever that thing is. Uh, it is in there obviously to give a bit of structural support as well, but I'm removing it because I'm going to use it in another way to connect the two drawers to make them one drawer. And you'll see me struggling for a little while trying to remove it. It just would not come out and obviously there was no way to get it out. So I'm bringing in the big guns. And yes, I have a tremor in my left hand, which I knew about, but didn't actually realize how bad it was until I saw this video. So that was a bit of a uh, realization as well. give this a little bit more of a modern feel I'm just going to taper the legs slightly and cut that up and just get rid of that detail it's not appealing to me or my style so I'm just going to remove that
Now I'm just going to come in and sand this and tidy it up a bit. Now I actually thought that this piece was timber, this front piece only. The rest of it is actually just chipboard and MDF. And the way that this was sprayed, it actually looked like normal timber with stain on it, but it wasn't. It was MDF. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I can prime it, so I just sanded it all back anyway, just so that there was no bleed through from that stain spray stuff. Off camera, I cut that middle section that was between the drawers, just so that they would that it would be the exact size between the drawers now. So they're still on the same runners, both drawers. Um, I'm just actually making them one drawer, except you will notice that I've made one big mistake here. Right about that moment, I realized. I need to remove the bottom of the top drawer so that it is one big drawer and not just two drawers stuck together and no access to the bottom one. Once the bottom of the drawer is out, I'm just putting the rails back on so that the drawer can still slide in and out nicely. I'm going to keep two at the two drawer rails. Now I can assemble it to make it one big drawer. Uh, you will also notice that there is gaps on either side, but don't worry about that. You'll see here what I'm actually doing. I am using my trusty old blind slats again, and I'm just creating a... Um, fluted not the right word I'm not sure just a pattern across the front and I do mess up so spoiler alert I the gaps are not perfect but and I was really worried to start with because I thought this is going to look terrible and I was contemplating ripping it all apart and starting again um, but no no one has time for that and it's only for me I'm not selling this piece so I decided to just go with it and once it was painted, you couldn't even notice anyway. So now I'm just gonna go through and fill the gaps where it's been joined, just to make sure it's all nice and even because it will show through some of those uh, slats. And then once it's dry, just give it a sand and continue on with the pattern. Because I'm lazy, I was using a little nail gun. It's not great for jobs like this, but it does the trick semi okay. So, I mean, it doesn't push the nails right in. So I did have to come back and hammer those in. And I have just now broken the bottom drawer. As you can see, it's bowed. So now I have to fix this. See this here? It's come off the drawers. So now I have to work out how to fix that because it's the bottom drawer. So this will be interesting. Far out, I'm gonna fix it. Out of that. 
All right, I'm gonna have to unscrew it. I had a little tantrum and I got over it and got it fixed, so all good. Now I am just going to go through and trim off all the tops of these slats. And this is where disaster number 565,000 of this project happens. You can see these slats start to split. So yay, this is fun. Um, anyway, I get this sort off and then go back off camera and fix up those little bits that have come undone. And of course, now I need to sand it all. So while I'm sanding it, there's a few more splits that happen, but never mind, they get fixed as well. So uh, it's all just part of the process when it comes to doing things like this, I guess. But, and I really had no clear direction of what I was trying to do. And I do tend to go at things like a bull in a china shop, but never mind, we got there in the end. Now I'm going to make the basket for the inside of this and here's a little lolly dog cameo. She likes to hang around while I work and she also likes to go outside a lot while I'm in the middle of doing something. So here she is waiting patiently for me to get up and put her out. To make the basket for the inside, I am just using two doorway drop cloths that you put between the doors when you're painting. And I just thought that this might be good to fold over those edges over the filing cabinet um, where the files would hang, the file hanger things. So I'm just taking some uh, Velcro. It is stick Velcro or, you know, take, um, sticky velcro I don't know how to explain it you know like peel and stick velcro but I did use some hot glue as well just to secure it in place properly and what I'm going to do is use one going one way and one going the other way so you'll see what I mean in a bit of a cross pattern and then joining the corners to make the basket now I'm just dry fitting it or you know fitting it in situ just to see to make sure it's going to work and um there goes the toe tap again. I do that when I think. Anyway, on with it. Voila, I have a basket. Now to fit the Velcro to the front and back of the drawers, just so that the basket has somewhere to uh, grab onto at the back as well as the front and all sides. So nothing should scoot down. I am a little bit worried about, or not worried, just a little bit concerned about those gaps in the side. I might come back in and just hot glue those as well. Now I'm just gonna sand the front down where I made all those messes with splintering off the slats. And you will notice that the slats are not evenly spaced. They're pretty, I mean, they're okay, but they're not perfect. 
and it really did bug me while it was raw like this. I kept looking at it just thinking, I want to burn it. Um, I'm glad I didn't because once it's primed and painted, it doesn't actually look too bad. So off camera, I did give this a thorough clean. I didn't actually scuff sand it or anything. I'm using an adhesion primer. So this is the Cuts and Millie um, Boutique Primer and Adhesive Bond, and it is the gray one. So I'm just coming in with that um, because the um, Derwent River color that I'm using, one of the new colors, it's on a clear base. So you really should put a gray primer underneath just to give yourself the opportunity for less coats. Uh, it does take three coats of the Derwent River because again, clear base paint, but it comes up a treat and I love it. So stick with me and I'm just gonna paint. So enjoy the rest of this painting process. All right, I did one coat of the adhesive primer and now I'm coming in with the color Derwent River. Now don't worry, it does look quite light here because as I explained, this is a boutique mineral paint, the Cuts and Millie boutique mineral paint, and it is on a clear base. So it does take quite a few more coats than uh, a white based paint. But what I absolutely love about the Cuts and Millie Boutique Mineral Paint is that it is self-leveling and self-sealing. So you will see no brush strokes once this is done. And I didn't even bother sealing it with the Cuts and Millie Boutique Top Coat or Hemp Salve or Wax or anything because there's no need to. Um, this is going in our bathroom and I have painted my uh, main bathroom vanity in our Boutique Mineral Paint before and I did not seal that either and it's still in perfect condition. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna bother sealing this. Here's a reminder of what we started with. Thank you guys so much for watching and please stick around for the final reveal.